Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between the flow going from a larger, from a smaller valve to a larger valve. In particular, a 2.3 to a 2.350 valve on a Brodix 366 CNC ported head. Before I do that, I want to talk about a few things. First, I'm sorry this video is coming out late on Wednesday. Usually I have them out by now. I've been really busy, which brings up my next point. Um, phone calls. I cannot begin to tell you the amount of phone calls and emails that are coming through and everything else. And I'm just going to, I'm only telling you guys this to under, so like you can understand why maybe I haven't gotten back to you or um, I'm trying to rush to get you. It seems like I'm trying to get you off the phone. So we'll go through it. Um, I get messages from these sources, text messages, emails, Facebook Messenger on my personal one, Facebook Messenger on my private one, and then there's messages from the YouTube itself. That's just the digital writing ones. And then I've got phone calls coming in and then uh, voicemails and then phone calls themselves. Now, why am I saying this? Because I don't have any free time. I have zero free time. You want to know where I spent my vacation this summer? And back. That's what I do. This is it. And I'm not complaining. I'm only telling you this because I really don't have a lot of time. So if you're calling, I want you to understand, try to limit yourself to five minutes, okay? Because that's about really all I can spare on, at, that t at that time. And I know somebody like, well, you're seeing very rude. Rude to who? The person that's calling or the customer stuff that I'm not getting done because I'm spending time on a phone call. Some of you just call to talk and tell stories, which under most circumstances, maybe I'd be okay with it. But if I had any free time, which I don't, okay? Um, I don't want you to think that I don't care about your stories, about your car that you had when you were 12 and how cool it was and how fast it ran. That's great and stuff. Or about the set of heads you ported and everything else. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but please understand, if I'm trying to rush you to get off there, it's because I have people that have paid money for me to get some of their stuff done. And you're taking up the time for them. And I, I want to give you attention, but I also need to give the attention to one that's already paid money. So I'm sorry if that comes across rude, but I need you to understand. If you call, please limit yourself to five minutes. Um, if it goes beyond five minutes, le le uh, write an email and then I can get back to you at my own time. When you're calling, you're calling, it, I pick up when I can anytime. Um, so that interrupts what I'm doing at that moment. Emails, I answer at my own leisure. So if you're wanting a better response, probably email. Okay, let's get to it. All right. Sorry for that, but I just want to get it off. The head itself was a, um, Brodix, and I'll show you in a second, a Brodix CNC 3 Extra big block Chevy head. Um, it had stock 2.30 valves, 188 exhaust valves. The only thing I did was I cut it to a larger intake valve. Now, I will say I did not float with the valves that came from Brodix. If you watched my previous video about this head, you would have seen more about it. But just so, just to kind of give you an idea, this is the valve I floated with. This is not what comes in the Brodix's um, heads. This is a Ferrea Comp Plus stainless steel valve. For the record, to me, these are the finest stainless steel valves that are out there, period, to me. Um, however, this 230 does not have a back cut. That's how they come. However, which is, I don't know if the camera will capture it, it's got an extra material built up on the ledge here that almost acts like a back cut, but not quite. What I did with the customer, because he's on a bigger bore, this heads were going on a 582, which means it's a 4600 bore, which means he could take advantage of a bigger valve, I said, why don't we cut out to a two bigger valve? So I cut it out to a 2.350. So it's 50 thousandths longer, larger diameter valve. And I put a different valve job on, of course, than what Brodix has when I did this. Now, this is the same Ferreira Comp Plus valve, just it's only thing difference between this one and this one is, this one is a bigger head diameter. And I did this. I, um, refaced it on the 45. That's where that sits against the head. That's the scene angle. And then I added a back cut, which is 33 degrees. And then I reflowed the head. Now I will say, because I used my own cutter, it was more aggressive. And you watched in the other video, you could see how it left the throat a little bit bigger. Um, and so I had to blend that out. And I'll show you that in just a second. But let's go ahead and go through the results because it may look confusing to some. Okay. For the big, for guys that don't know anything about big blocks, Big blocks have a long runner and a short runner. They do not flow the same, okay? I, I don't know very many other heads that are worked this way. Usually if you get a small block Chevy head, they're mirrored. So they flow the same, they're just reversed. Ford heads are all the same, LS heads are all the same. But Severys have distinct advantage of having a long runner and a short runner that are vastly different. So anyway, 
This is the stock long runner. And this is just changing the exhaust, I'm sorry, changing to the larger intake valve. And you'll see what's changed. So I'm gonna go back and forth. So this one's a short runner and that's the short runner for that's had the bigger valve, but we'll talk to that in, in a minute. So if we, I, I really don't care about one and two. I'm gonna go ahead and skip those two, but you're gonna look 144 to 163. You start seeing big gains at 300. You go from 218 to 238, a, a huge jump. 400, remember, is the one I care about. I care about four, six, and one. So if I look at four, 287 to a 295, almost eight CFM, pretty big jump. Now, 600, this word is going to get, you're going to be like, oh my God, you ruined it. 387 to 377, I lost 10 CFM, which is like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. But if, look at through the entire curve. I'm just going to read off the numbers through here, okay? Almost 20 CFM gain at two. Um, you're looking at almost 20 there, uh, almost nine. It lost a little bit at five and it lost more at six. So those two numbers are worse, but then at seven gains five, about the same, about the same, and then it gains a little bit more. So if you look at a long runner, it doesn't look like it's gained a whole lot except for in the low left flows. Now I'm gonna explain this because it looks like the bigger valve was a mistake. Here's the reason for probably the majority of this. This one was flowed without a back cut. This one was flowed with the back cut. I will probably do a video later on showing what happens when you add a back cut just as far as what it does with flow because this is kind of something you see. Typically when you don't have a back cut, the low lift flow numbers all the way to say six or five are pretty bad. And then not having a back cut usually makes them gain more at this range. However, I always choose to put a back cut on the valves. One, because it does help shred some of the fuel, so it helps with that flow. And two, and this one's kind of important, um, it usually helps, besides shredding the fuel, it usually helps the flow anyway. So if I look at my whole entire curve, really if we added the, how much it's gained and how much it's lost, it's not a big gain as far as CFM wise on the long runner. It really didn't change much. So you're like, well, you wasted your time. Let's go to the short runner. The short runner, we'll, just, we'll do it for 286 to 2, 290. So not a huge gain there. And it, it did lose again at five. 238 to 235, lost three. But at six, 363, 370. That's a game of almost seven. All right at seven. Uh, 380, now I did lose at seven though. It went from 389 to 385, so lost five there. But then at eight, 390, 397. It's a gain of seven. 900, 400, 401 to almost 410. One inch, 407 to 420, okay? So on the, long, on the short runner, it's still lost in some places, but for the majority, if I add this up, I guarantee it's a win. It definitely gained more CFM. And I know somebody, I'm about to hear them on the comments, no one cares about one inch valve lift. This tells me how stable the port is. And I will say, I did zero port work on this. I just did the valve job, blended in the top cut into the chamber, and floated again. This is telling me the way it backs up like this. Yeah, it goes on the long runner, 408, 405, 396, 395. See how it's backing up? This tells me that the port itself is not entirely happy. This means it needs additional port work. Typically what it means is you need more area over the short side in some way um, because it's now, it's moving too much air and the short side can no longer support it. So you need more area to help it pick up flow. And then what would happen is it would keep gaining flow all the way through. The short runner doesn't do this because it doesn't move as much, like doesn't move as much air, but you look at it and like, yeah, it does right there. It, it does, but the areas are different in the short runner than the long runner, okay? So if you're looking at this, you're like, I would never have my valves cut larger. Uh, yes, you should. Um, this, it's still a positive gain, it, just positive gain right there. The other reason is it now has more area. So I can get as much area as far as curtain area from a lesser valve lift, since some of you don't want to run big valve lifts, with a bigger intake valve. Matter of fact, on some of our circle track classes that allow this, when they are lift limited, like they say you have a 480 lift, but they don't limit how big a valve we run, I try to run as big a valve as I can because you get more area that way and they go faster. Um, anyway, so this is, to, to me, this is a good game. And you're, if you're, in case you're wondering like, can you put an idea how much you think it's worth? It's probably worth 20. 
Do I think it's worth more than 20? No, I, do, I don't. It's not like a full port job or anything like that, but I do think it's worth 20 horsepower. And you're like, well, the float numbers don't look that way. From my personal experience, it's worth 20, okay? But I wanna show you one other thing too. The exhaust size did not change, okay? I did not go to a larger valve, exhaust valve. Matter of fact, be quite honest with you, most big block Chevys, their exhaust valve's too big anyway. You really could get away with a smaller one. However, they come with 188, so we leave them at 188, just because it's common. All I did was just do a valve job. I didn't I even have to blend this one. It came in perfectly. Same valve, no back cut, nothing, just the same way, same valve, test the same way, but it picked up quite a bit. So you look at um, 400 here, it went from a 209 to 236, huge jump there. Uh, 600, 273 to 288. And if we look at the peak, it really didn't change much. But down here, it did. So good numbers there on the exhaust flow. So that helped pick it up. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the head so you can see what actually, what it looks like so you understand what's going on. So let me take you over the head. That's This is the head, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is on the flow bench. Okay. I'm just giving you an idea. So this is how it's flowed. By the way, somebody's gonna knock on my clay things. Each one of these clays, that I have are made for this. So this one will only ever be used on a big block retainer port, long port. This one will only be used on a short port. I have a whole bunch of modeling clay for different ports. See what I mean? Long runner oval port, long runner, short runner oval port. LS3, small block Chevy, um, headhunter, Ford. This is um, 1205 gasket. I can't remember what this one is. So each one is done that way. So they're rarely ever altered, okay? But let's look at the head. Okay, so here's the head. I'm gonna turn on my light, okay? And I'll try to show you what all has been done. Okay, that's it. Okay, oh, my light's being horrible here. There we go. As you could tell, let me grab my little pointer here. Why you're looking and probably not admiring. Um, it actually has five angles. My cutters are five angles, but what I do is I blend all except for the last undercut. Okay. So you can think of this as a radius and, an, and one undercut. And the reason why you leave this in case someone's asking, because I know somebody said I radius all the way to the seat. You leave one because it helps shred the fuel. So as fuel's coming here, like any wet, having the ridge there breaks it up and it helps with wet flow. So it, in other words, it helps atomize fuel. So you leave one. Then you've got your top cut, which is blended into the chamber. But that's all that's done. You could tell I did no more than that all the way around. Okay. That's it. So, and the, I did use some work here because the top cut digs into the chamber. So I cut out some of that. By the way, the throat came in, in case you're wondering. The throat being from here across, came in at 90.6%. I did not increase it. All I did was just blend in what was already there. So it would have been much bigger, of course, with the two, 300 valve. This is what the exhaust side looks like. Let me get my flashlight around here. Probably gonna fall off. Okay. By the way, the head's still dirty. I need to wash it. And then the symbol. Same thing. That's all that's done. Nothing major. Let me see if I can scoot the head here. There. Trying to get the right lighting there we go there you can see it hopefully but nothing really that's been done that cartridge roll you see there in the port that's what Brodix did I didn't do that I just did the valve job and of course when you do the chamber you blend it in that's it that's all so in case you're wondering you ever want to do it yourself like how can I improve this head well, you can cut it out to a 2350 valve if you got a bigger than a 4-5 bore or bigger you can do it by the way if you watch the other video and you saw the deck surface, this is what it comes off at the mill with. See how much cleaner it is? Much better job than the one that had on from the factory. So anyway, um, the chamber size, in case someone was wondering, because I did CC them, this is 118.5 cc's after the valve job and all the blending. So you guys, thanks for watching and your patience and you take care.